Hi guys, so it's Tuesday and it's been a hell of a busy day in the office. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, private guiding stuff happening. There's nice workshops and stuff in the cards. Gorillas, chimps, watch this space. Anyway, um, taking a quick break to look at a tutorial on a leopard image. Now, this is not going to turn into let me process your images for you, but someone, Alyssa, had a question on Twitter and we've been emailing forward and back. And the idea of sending in an image that you're struggling with, me having a crack at it and turning it into hopefully some value for the community out there, that's what I'm after. So if you have images that fits that mold, absolutely send them through details at the end of this video. But this is the image that Alyssa wanted me to have a look at. Great sighting, great image. But before we get stuck in, just a couple of things that if you're following me online, I hope you do, there is um, a few recurring themes here. Number one, don't process recipe driven. Don't get stuck into the idea of, ooh, Jerry created this preset, let me use that preset. It's not going to work because it's different content. Also, before you start processing, know where you're going. Don't just sit around and swing slide aside. To, it's, it's the same as going the point and pray route in for wildlife photography, going brrr, and then just picking something and that's your shot. It's not the idea. Know where you're going with your processing. Don't go recipe driven. With, what that means is you need to understand what the different settings in Lightroom does and how you can get um, processing value from it. Those two things keep in mind. So let's jump into Lightroom here. Now, the idea with this, it's, Alyssa wants to enter this into a competition and it processes naturally. So naturally for me means we're not going to change content in the frame. We're going to process it as we would film, maybe a bit of dodging, maybe a bit of burning, but global adjustments mostly. So here we go. As you guys know, and most of the time I like to start with my black and white points um, to set them. It gives me a nice point to start from. Have a look. I can now see on the screen that this chin area is too bright. So I back up the white a bit, makes it manageable. And I might even just take the highlights down a bit. Right, next thing, I'm gonna look at it. And again, I know what these sliders do, but you need to learn this and that's how you need to process it from there. The big thing that Alyssa wanted to look at in this image, and this is where the value proposition comes from, is putting a, I hate this, a vignette around the image. But I'm not talking vignette, hallmark, boom, there's your circle, because that's just crap. It's something that we shouldn't do. A vignette, the idea behind a vignette is to keep the viewer's eye, which is initially in the middle of the frame, from escaping out. It's a darker edge around, sometimes light depending on the content, to stop the viewer's eye from running out of the frame. So, in this case, I'm not going to touch the rest of it for now. I'm going to look at these special adjustments. Halo effect, or the, the, the vignette if you will, let me do that. So that would be the radial filter tool, yeah? Mine is set up, as you can see, to take the middle of that and make it lighter. So, the idea behind this tool, Alyssa, for you is select, reset everything, select your radial filter, drag a circle. Now, the circle I want to work on here is I'm going to make the outside of this radial tool go darker. Right now, you can see it's set up. This is nice in Lightroom CC or Lightroom 6 that it has an overlay mask where it shows you where it's going to work. You can flip that down here by hitting the invert mask and now it'll affect the areas towards the outside of the frame. This is what I want. So as with the special adjustment brush, the red area shows me where the adjustments are going to take place. So I can hold my cursor there, see it again. Right, so I don't want to affect my leopard and the uh, reflection too much. So that should be a pretty solid place to start from. Right, all you do now is now you go over to your adjustments and I'm gonna overcook it just so you can see what's happening. That'll happen, it's adjusting outside of my radial filter and I'm gonna back it up till it looks a little bit more natural. I can also take my shadows down, which is a bit more subtle. It's not gonna just do a full on halo, it's gonna just do the shadow adjustments. So if I look at that, just that on its own already makes a huge difference in focusing the viewer's attention onto the area where I want, which is this. Now, once I'm done, because this is not a perfect circle scenario, there's different areas in this image. I'm gonna take this brush, reset it, I'm gonna do down a little bit on the exposure, down a little bit on the shadows. If you haven't yet, go and watch the video in which I discuss flow and density. Very nice one to make you understand those sliders and that's important from now on. I'm not gonna cover it here. So now, with that settings down on flow and density, I'm gonna drop exposure and shadows in the areas I'm painting. So now I'm selectively painting areas 
where I want it to be a little bit darker. Maybe just there one, twice. Right, so think of this now. This leopard isn't sitting in a perfect round scenario. There's different textures and layers. And with, by using your flow and density correctly, you can recreate those layers instead of just having a full-on circle around the animal. So if I look at my brush, I'm gonna click this on and off a couple of times. Watch the outsides, yeah? You can see how it helps you focus the attention in. If I go back to my radial filter, I can turn that on and off as well. The combination of those two, yeah, let me just see if I left my brush on. The combination of those two, of my radio filter and the brush, combined with black whites and just relieving the highlights a bit, leaves me with that. Right, so Alyssa, the question you had was specifically around how to create a vignette natural. That's how I would go about it. Obviously now, I would still go and do your normal sharpening. Um, if anything, let's just play with this. Maybe a little bit of clarity just to give it that edge contrast, a little bit of con uh, a little bit vibrance. That's where I would probably leave it. Good image, nice process. Now, again, guys, I'm not going to process every single image you sent me, but if you have a question on a difficult image that you think can add value, that you think other people might want to be interested to hearing the answer to as well, Get in touch. Hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. I am going to dive into a bit more of the video content in the next couple of days, weeks, two weeks. Um, the wildlife photography Q&A is coming back. I'm also going to do a raw challenge, which things like this will add great value to. So there you have it. Alyssa, I hope that helps you. Have my email. We are chatting on Twitter. Get in touch and ask, and we can carry on from there. Um, that's it for now. It's Tuesday. I'm going to get back to work. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. I'll see you guys next time.